What is up guys, it's your boy Sleep Deprived Cacus, and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, revealing official information, and so, let's get started. Now first things first, what's been going on this week in Destiny 2? <laughs> So damn much, that's what. So, starting on the Tuesday weekly reset, we had two absolutely massive things happen. First of all, we had the Final Shape gameplay reveal live stream, in which Bungie showed off the new Prismatic subclasses, a mix of light and darkness skills together, and we're going to be going over uh, that live stream and that content more in a second. But the other thing that happened on that Tuesday weekly reset, like, five minutes after the livestream ended was the launch of the Into the Light free DLC. So that is live in the game right now. And on that Tuesday, we had uh, two big injections of content. First of all, we have the new Onslaught Wave Survival game mode. And this is going to be how you're getting those brave arsenal weapons. Guys, I just put out my ultimate guide to Onslaught, kind of everything you need to know at a base level, a bunch of tips, gear recommendations, loadouts and stuff to help you get to that Wave 50 on Legend difficulty. Check it out, it's linked right up above. Now, aside from Onslaught, the other big injection of content was the Whisper Exotic Mission. You can now go and get the craftable version of the Whisper of the Worm exotic sniper rifle. And then after you get it, you can actually go and upgrade it pretty significantly by getting the field prep perk for it. There's also a hidden object within the Whisper mission that will give you more intrinsic traits. I'm just gonna link that video right up above about how to upgrade it, find that hidden object, stuff like that. And it has a link to the original Whisper mission guide if you need it. But those are the two kind of main pieces of playable content injected into the game. Now let's talk about that final shape gameplay reveal because since then, Bungie has actually come out with supplemental articles diving even more and divulging even more information about the final shape. With the focus being on prismatic. So what the heck is prismatic? Well, it's a new subclass. So instead of selecting strand or solar, you can select prismatic. And what Bungie says is that the prismatic subclass is familiar, but with a twist. Your super, melee, grenade, and aspect slots will feature a selection of light and darkness abilities from all five types. You can also select from all available movement modes and class abilities, including the subclass specific ones such as Phoenix Dive, Acrobats Dodge, and Thruster. Our main goal for Prismatic is to enable new and interesting build crafting combinations that lead to new types of gameplay so that we can keep the game feeling fresh. As part of this, some of the abilities we've chosen are ones that we think have been underused since their initial release and have exciting interactions with the rest of the roster. In many cases, we've adjusted how certain aspects function to specifically enable these unique interactions. Interactions. They say with Prismatic, we want to make an immediate impact. From the very first mission of the final shape, you will have access to a complete starting Prismatic build with a set of light and darkness abilities, aspects, and a full set of fragments. But moving on, another important thing about Prismatic is that you have access to Transcendence. So what that is, is you have a Light Meter and a Dark Meter. So you're going to fill the Light Meter by using Light Abilities and weapons that are Light Elements, and then the Darkness Meter is the opposite. Kinetic weapons will actually give you energy for both the Light and Dark Meter. And when you fill both of them, you can essentially activate a mini super and become transcendent. It's going to increase your damage and also give each different class access to a special grenade that mixes two different elements. So the hunter is going to have the Hailfire Spike, which says throw a device charged with stasis and solar that attaches to surfaces or targets and then erupts into a slowing storm after a short duration 
the device ignites, creating a deadly scorching cyclone. Then the Titan gets electrified snare. Throw an explosive device energized with strand and arc that detonates in a supercharged suspending burst. The suspended targets take heavy damage over time and chains jolting lightning to any nearby targets. And then lastly, you have the Warlock with freezing singularity. Throw a mass of void energy and stasis matter. On impact, it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a halo of slowing ice. After a short duration, the black hole implodes, suppressing and dealing heavy damage to nearby targets. Like, this is insane because have you ever looked at a vortex grenade and thought, well, it's already sucking every guy I can possibly see. If only it also slowed down each guy while it was sucking them, so it gives them even less chance to escape. There's probably a better way to phrase that. Anyways, let's get into what actual abilities are going to be in Prismatic? Because this is probably the craziest part. You've probably been wondering, okay, well, what arc ability, what solar ability are mashed up into Prismatic? Bungie literally tells us exactly what is coming in Prismatic. So, first of all, we have the Prismatic Hunter. And we have a screenshot of exactly what it will look like in game when you're build crafting with Prismatic. So we have a bunch of familiar abilities, but we have some all new fragments and we'll cover those in a second. So Bungie says, uh, the Prismatic Hunter is evasive and maneuverable grappling around the battlefield and leaping into advantageous positions with ascension, their starting prismatic build enables that maneuverability. With Winter's Shroud providing a handy debuff, that stylish executioner, which now triggers by defeating an enemy affected by any subclass debuff, um, what? So if you kill a frozen or scorched enemy, you just go invisible? That's insane. Anyways, they say, can activate from providing easily accessible invisibility, I'll say, to reposition to wherever you need to be with safety. And then guys, Bungie actually just provides this chart, going over all of the different abilities coming with Prismatic Hunter. So you can see, five different supers, one for each different element, uh, same with melee abilities, grenade abilities, and aspects, and I'm not going to go over this in too much detail because I think I'm actually going to make a, a separate video going over all the different crazy combinations you can get with prismatic subclasses, and frankly this would be like a two hour video if I went over everything in depth. That's how much stuff has come out uh, this week, but yeah, you can see that stuff right here. I want to point out that for the arc super, we have Storm's Edge. Now, this is the new super that was revealed to be coming with the Final Shape DLC, and that's actually going to be a common thing. So, let's move on from there to the Prismatic Titan. You can see the in-game screenshot right here, guys, and they say the Prismatic Titan excels at disabling enemies to make them easy targets for high-impact follow-ups. Dranger's Lash, Shackle Grenade, and Diamond Lance are all potent primers for a subsequent consecration, thunderclap, or powerful unbreakable blast. The starting build allows them to freeze targets with diamond lance, which can be created from any ability final blow. That's actually a lot better. And wind up fully charged thunderclaps to remove the threat from the fight in one fell swoop. And then here we have the chart with all of the Prismatic Titan abilities, and yet again, I'm going to point out that uh, the Void Super is Twilight Arsenal, which is the new Final Shape Super, where you throw the Void Battle Axes at enemies, and then you can actually go pick up those Battle Axes. So, it's kind of exciting that we have access to the brand new Supers in Prismatic, but would Bubble be better? Like, like maybe, to be honest. So, anyways, uh, let's move on from there, and then we have the Prismatic Warlock. So Bungie says, the Prismatic Warlock brings any army to bear, summoning a horde of bleak watchers, hellions, and threadlings in the blink of an eye. Their starting build lets them lock down entire rooms with bleak watcher and penumbral blast, and their ability damage, including damage caused by shattering the frozen targets, kickstarts Feed the Void, granting grenade energy to start the cycle anew. And 
Here is the chart for the Prismatic Warlock. Again, Song of Flame is that new super, but they also mentioned in the description that for the aspects, we have Hellion. So just like for the different final shape supers, we also have a new aspect accompanying the supers. So Hellion is essentially going to be like an arc buddy, except it's a solar buddy. It's going to shoot out like a, almost like a mortar projectile. And we saw a bit of gameplay of it functioning. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The prismatic subclasses will also have access to the brand new final shape uh, aspects. And Already, I mean, we can see the easy combo of Hellion plus Weaver's Call. So put down your healing rift, you summon a solar buddy and a bunch of threadlings. That's an insane amount of value for just putting down your class ability. Now, moving on from there, guys, Bungie talks more about unlocking this stuff. They say, while you'll start off with a fairly focused initial loadout, you'll quickly expand your tool set and possible combinations. As you continue through the pale heart of the Traveler, you'll uncover the remaining abilities, aspects, and fragments as mission rewards, as well as unlocking them through post-campaign quests and as collectibles hidden in the world. Our ultimate goal is that as you progress in your journey to save the Traveler and humanity, you're able to continually experiment with new build crafting options and find novel ways to tackle the challenges ahead of you. There's no currency to earn to unlock these new build crafting elements when you find a prismatic chest in the world or after a, a particularly tough battle, they're immediately granted and available to use. Part of building Prismatic was ensuring that every option and combination felt viable across a variety of content and difficulties. So most of the abilities you've seen here have also had a tuning pass and will share more uh, detail in the lead up to the Final Shapes release. Aspects that were damage type specific had had their requirements loosened when using Prismatic, for example, Diamond Lance and Feed the Void activate from ability defeats of any damage type, not just Stasis and Void, and Stylish Executioner activates when defeating an enemy afflicted by any elemental debuff. And then lastly guys, Bungie actually unveils some of the new prismatic fragments. So they say, one of the challenges we identified early on was that a lot of the power from our single damage type subclasses comes from the network of many interconnected gameplay loops of the player can dip into when they focus their build crafting on a single element. When the player's focus is split between multiple elements, we still need to provide enough opportunities for stacking powerful synergies, as well as providing value to the new transcendence loop. To help us solve that problem, we've increased most prismatic aspect fragment slot allotments to three, with a few of our most potent options staying at two fragment slots. So, if you have a certain aspect that exists in the game right now that's going to be in a prismatic subclass, maybe it has two or one fragment slots, but in the prismatic version, it's gonna have three, and that's pretty important. Now they say, you're going to need the extra space. With prismatic from day one of the final shape, you'll be able to find or earn a total of 21 fragments, a sizable bump over the typical 14 to 16. Some are reimaginings uh, or combinations of existing fragments, and some are brand new. Unlike our core damage types, fragments in prismatic are unlocked for all of your characters as soon as you acquire Wire them. If you finish uh, the campaign on your Hunter and want to start your Titan, your Titan will have all the fragments you unlocked on your Hunter. That's awesome. So here they are. First of all, we have Facet of Balance. Rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy. Oh, by the way, guys, that sounds pretty similar to the actual origin trait of all the brave arsenal weapons that say, do light damage get this, do dark damage get that. Well, if you're playing Prismatic, you can get both of those at the same time. Then they have Facet of Bravery. Defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds uh, to your void weapons. Defeating targets with powered melee final blows grant unraveling rounds to your strand weapons. Then we have Facet of Dawn, and this is a starting fragment. Powered melee hits against targets make you radiant. Powered melee final blows make both you and nearby allies radiant. 
Then we have Facet of Defiance. Finishers create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, slows, severs, or makes targets volatile based on the damage type of your equipped super. Then Facet of Dominance. Your Void Grenades weaken and Arc Grenades jolt targets. Then Facet of Generosity. Defeating targets while transcendent creates orbs of power for your allies. Facet of Grace says, damaging targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grants you and nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. Then Facet of Hope, while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. And then Facet of Justice, while transcendent, your ability final blows explode. Then Facet of Protection, which is a starting one, while surrounded by enemies, you are more resistant to incoming damage. And then we have Facet of Purpose, another starting one. Picking up an Orb of Power grants either Amplified, Restoration, Frost Armor, Woven Mail, or Overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super. And then lastly, we have Facet of Ruin, which is a starting one. Increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and increases the size of solar ignitions. And that's gonna wrap up our deep dive for Prismatic. Guys, my brain is already theory crafting. Like the builds in the final shape are going to be insane. But moving on from there, we have even more information within the TWAB. First of all, about that crazy Pantheon event that Bungie is being super secretive about. Well, they say it's a new PVE challenge that will start on April 30th. It involves not only a gauntlet of raid boss encounters currently available in the game, but also also a few twists on how to approach them. We are keeping some details close to the chest, including the list of enemies that you will face, but since you're all eager to know more about it, the goal of Pantheon is to relive those incredible and heroic moments that raids always deliver, while also changing what you expect from some of the encounters many of you know so well. Prepare to be nimble, adapt your strategies or throw them out the window, and your fire team will find success. Pantheon will increase in scale and difficulty each week, starting with four bosses in the first one and growing up to eight in a row on May 21st. Each time a new boss is added, the active modifiers will rotate and the power cap will change, starting with players at five power below all the way up to contest mode equivalent of 20 power below. As difficulty goes up, so does the pool of available rewards. You can get adept raid weapons, deep sight versions of raid weapons, and even exotic weapons. Some rewards are weekly and others are linked to pursuits or triumphs like the four new emblems, but many also depend on your performance. We challenge you to complete each encounter before the bonus timer expires to get a platinum score and the greatest rewards. When April 30th arrives, we hope you have trained and prepared yourselves, Guardians. Shax will have the quest you need to start your journey to become a God Slayer. Yeah, that's the title waiting for the champions that conquer Pantheon. That definitely sounds like something hardcore players can sink their teeth in. The one thing I'm confused about is the weapons. Like for myself, I already unlocked all the craftable raid weapons and I'm not too interested in the adept versions. Are they finally making the adept versions just properly craftable? That would be very interesting, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, it does sound very cool. Then we have some big updates to the HUD. So first of all, we have new buff channels. Here's a screenshot of what things are going to look like when the final shape launches, and I'm sure the more astute of you watching have already noticed quite a few differences. So first of all, you have critical info. This, and the example here is the unstable light buff, is going to appear right at the top of your screen. That's like super important activity uh, debuffs or buffs. Then you also have some changes to the weapon buff displays. So we have two now being displayed above the super bar instead of just one and they kind of stack really weirdly. 
On top of that, Bungie also talks about the prioritization of what buffs will appear, and you can read that for yourself right here. But they also have a big change to the buff appearances, and you can actually see them right here. So it's going to be a lot easier to tell, you know, buffs and debuffs apart and what kind of a buff it actually is. And that's gonna be some great quality of life improvements. Now, moving on from there, some important information, the weapons rotating out on June 4th, so when the final shape launches. So, here we go, for Trials of Osiris, the unexpected resurgence glaive, it's gone. The uh, cataphract, a heavy drum grenade launcher, the last week you can get it, it is April 23rd. The messenger pulse rifle, the last week you can get it is May 14th, and the igneous hammer, last week you can get it is May 21st. Now, for nightfalls, uh, the Braytech Osprey rocket launcher, the last week you can get it is April 9th, Loaded question, last week you can get it, is April 23rd. And then for Iron Banner, uh, the Yoram's Claw Pulse Rifle, last week April 30th. Same with Bite of the Fox, same with uh, the Pressurized Precision Fusion Rifle, and also the Swarm of the Raven Heavy Grenade Launcher is going away that week. So April 30th is going to be kind of like the last Iron Banner, and now we actually know that. I don't think that was announced before. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the return of the Kilts for Kids fundraiser. So this is going to help raise funds for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Western Washington and Alaska. Bungie always takes part in this every single year. And if you want to donate to this cause, here is the list of incentives. You'll see that at the $30 mark, you get the brand new kilted out shader and the new Heart of a Highlander emblem. And right here is the Heart of the Highlander emblem that you can see. Of course, more information is in the TWAB, which is linked in the description of this video. Guys, that is finally it for the video. Massive, massive update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.